All right, lover boy, I have to go to work. I will see you shortly. This will be the longest we've been separated for a long time. I'll see you soon, honey. Catbutt. Okay, I'll see you soon. Catbutt. <laughs> oh, buddy. Bye, Eleanor. I'll see you soon. I'll miss you too. Uh huh. Bye. <laughs> Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. It is 1225. I just left Duncan's. Cheers. Uh, my check-in for work today is at 205, 206, 208, something like that. Um, and I thought, way to use a blinker. Okay. Um, I thought that my check-in was closer to three o'clock in the afternoon. So I didn't get out of bed until like the last minute when I realized uh, what time of the morning it was. Um, I lounged in bed this morning a little longer um, than usual. There was a rainstorm this morning. I thought it was a hailstorm the way that the rain was hitting the roof so hard. Uh, it caused Buddy to teleport uh, off of the bed. Uh, he flies into my closet when he feels threatened. Um, let's see, uh, because I did not give myself the ideal amount of time, I did stop at Dunkin's for an iced coffee, a breakfast sandwich. That is my breakfast and my lunch today because I just didn't give myself enough time. Uh, now I'm at the airport and I'm going to hope and pray that I get a parking spot as good as I got yesterday when I visited my P.O. box. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how lucky I'll be today, but we'll see. Um, I am flying to Dallas today, I think. I think I'm flying to Dallas. One leg. Tomorrow, we have a Cabo turn, and I am not a fan of international. So Cabo is easy. It's a very, very simple flight, um, but I just hate going through customs. I don't have global entry because I'm lazy. Our company now reimburses us for global entry, but from what I hear on Facebook, it's not an easy way to be reimbursed. So... Eh, I don't do internationals almost ever, so I'm not, I don't think I'm going to bother with the global entry. Let me scan my card here, and oh, I still am so happy when I can get into the parking lot without getting mad. Do you remember back when my parking pass wouldn't work? <gasps> it's still a relief when it goes beep. All right, so I am done rambling for now, and I will see you either on the airplane, near the plane in Dallas sometime soon. All right, bye. Hey guys, all right, so I told you I'd see you in the airport, but um, <laughs> that'll be a long time from now. Um, I circled around four times. I stalked that parking area, could not get a parking spot. No one relinquished their spot. So I had to come out here to the edge of Siberia. Um, I'm four parking spots away from the very, very edge, which is a very long walk. I have my hat, which I am going to wear to protect my head from the sun. It is not uniform compliant. So if anybody sees me in the hat, they could they could report me for not being compliant, but um, I'm going to risk it. Um, let me get into the airport. It's going to be a very long walk. <sighs> All right, whatever. I'll see you at the airport. Can you see the airport? <laughs> oh, I'm going to get my steps in today. And as a welcome back to work treat, I got randomed, of course, and it was the most most convoluted experience I've had through KCM here in Las Vegas ever. Not great, but that's the worst part of my day. Today's gonna be great, right? Right? Let's do a quick room tour and then I'll debrief on the day and then I need to eat something. But uh, here's the room. A very nice little shower area with the toilet. Fun, fun, fun wallpaper. It looks like a little abandoned gas stations. Interesting. The um, man, the uh, vanity is very nice and wide. I skip over the hotel's names. Look, interesting. They have wire hangers in my airline's colors. No wire hangers. If you know, you know. Um, the room itself, quite nice. Quite nice. Um, nice comfortable beds. These are queen size, I think. And nice artwork on the wall there. Kind of neat. All right. I need to eat first, then I'll talk to you guys later. 
Hey guys, all right, so it's a little bit later than I thought it would be when I finally got to talk to you. Um, I sat down and ate some dinner. I had some chicken in sort of an Alfredo sauce with some pasta. It was very, very good. Uh, do you remember my visit to Costco in my last video? The chicken breasts that I bought, the box, I saw the sign over the packaging and it said $7 and change. I didn't look at the small print. It's $7 and change per pound. Yeah, so each of those boxes was $20. So I spent $40 on four chicken breasts, kicking myself, kicking myself. I hope they're good. I really do hope they're good. They're huge. So they'll be big meals, but I'm a little frustrated that I didn't pay attention to the per pound bit, but whatever. Live and learn. Um, yeah, today was a very easy day in that it was a short trip, two hours and 29 minutes from Las Vegas to um, here to Dallas. <clears throat> the challenge, and I don't like speak poorly of coworkers because that's not appropriate. And I did not get along beautifully with my chaser today. It wasn't, she's not a bad person and I'm not a bad person. We just weren't a good match. We weren't a good match. Um, no matter what I said, there was a response that seemed like it was a contest or something. And, and I, we just didn't seem to understand each other. Uh, and so we kind of had to stop uh, that. And we both pulled out books, which is the best part of having a book on a flight and um, play video games. We were polite to each other. I mean, certainly. And we continued to speak about, you know, small talk. But <clears throat> anything really more than topical, there seemed to be a vast difference of, of philosophy and whatever. It was just not a fantastic, fantastic two and a half hours, but <clears throat> our passengers were fantastic. Um, the girls in the back are great. So ta-da, the day is over. That's good. Move on to the next one. Tomorrow is going to be a long day. Excuse me. Um, our van is at 8.30 in the morning. Our showtime is 9 a.m. We're going to fly to Cabo and then back here and then to Baltimore. It's a very long day. It's blocked at like eight hours and 59 minutes. It's like the most we can possibly fly legally. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a long day. Uh, it is, um, like I said, it's, it's 1125 right now. I have to wake up at 715 in the morning to get ready make breakfast, eat, you know, shower, all that stuff, shave the little bits I do shave in preparation for my day. So I was just about to turn on my phone, my um, laptop and play a little game, but we all know what happens when I do. Um, oh, and bidding opened today. Bidding started today. So I did, after eating, I did put like together 20, 25 lines on my bid sheet. That's usually all I have to put up there, but I'm number 277 out of a thousand uh, in terms of bidding. Uh, according to seniority in my base, I'm 317, 319, something like that. But there are people who don't bid or they bid for reserve. So um, my, my bidding position in base is pretty good. It's pretty good. So I'm pretty happy. I usually get my first, second, or third choice. So that's good. <clears throat> Something I bought at Goodwill weeks and weeks ago. I forget when I bought it. Um, it was certainly before my last trip. Um, I found this at Goodwill. Uh, and I never really look in purses and bags because there's rarely anything good. I happened to walk by the per the area that I, for uh, little pouches, cosmetic bags and things like that. I was looking for something to put singles in for tips during trips for the van driver, um, any wait staff that I might interact with, uh, rooms uh, if if I you know leave a room kind of messier than usual. I certainly try to leave a tip. <clears throat> But in looking for a little cosmetic bag, look what I found. If you know what this brand is, and I've said it before, I've mentioned this before, this brand before, it's my fantasy brand I love. Do you, recogni do you recognize it? Goyard. It's a Goyard wristlet. The, the little uh, wrist strap is missing, but it's like a little Goyard wristlet in orange, one of my favorite colors in the collection, although red is my absolute favorite. But it's a Goyard little wristlet made in France, made in Paris. 
Um, and this piece, when new, was probably, I don't know, 250 I mean, I don't know, it was a couple hundred dollars for sure. Um, and um, so I have a little wristlet by Goyard. I keep this in my tote bag and I keep singles. Oh, that's not, <laughs> looked like I was slipping you off. I just keep my singles inside here so I can pull this out uh, rather than start rummaging through my pockets. And before I go on a trip or actually before the beginning of a month, I try to go to the bank and get a whole bunch of singles so I can be prepared for my trips during the course of a month. So I'm not sort of asking people for a dollar so I can tip the driver, you know, but how exciting is this? A Goyard wristlet for, it was a $1.99, dollar ninety-nine, I think it was a dollar ninety-nine. It could have been two ninety-nine, but I think it was $2. Hello. <laughs> oh, that was a big find. I was tempted to sell it, but when am I ever going to be able to buy myself a Goyard wristlet, you know, like this? So I'm keeping it. So I'm going to um, put all of this mess away. Uh, and uh, pack up so all I have to do when I wake up is eat and leave. So I will see you tomorrow. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hi, so uh, I just got my Gendex and my paperwork. It looks like we have 87 passengers booked on today's flight. <clears throat> I have my copies of my Gendex. Um, I have to do some reading during this flight uh, to remind myself what paperwork is required coming back. I'm not sure if every family has to have a form or if every individual has to have a form, but blah, blah, blah. I'll read that. Um, yeah, there we go. I will see you soon. Hey guys. All right, so welcome to Cabo. Really nice flight. My, the only fly in the ointment was my chaser. She is a pain in the neck. Kidding, she's amazing amazing such a difference between yesterday and today she's amazing gorgeous fun uh and she's patient with me at least so that's nice uh, <laughs> we have 59 people going back to um dallas and uh that flight was two hours and 29 minutes i'm expecting around the same thing super easy we had a um, bunch of people who were really celebrating so they all had lots of cocktails but we had to kind of slow it down at the end but yeah nice flight easy peasy no drama no trauma hoping for two more of those all right i will see you in dallas and there is my view of cabo i wouldn't mind coming here one day on a brief little vacation very very pretty love those mountains it's a gorgeous day wish we had a jet bridge. But we have our own bus. That's nice. It's 106 in Dallas. Well, that was an exercise, I'll tell you. So the flight was very nice. 50-something passengers, so super easy. No drama, no trauma. Uh, loving my chaser, and um, just a nice flight. Got to Dallas, I had to go through customs, which is very funny. I finally figured out how to use the mobile passport app, and that is a lifesaver. Uh, wound our way through. We didn't have to go through, well, we did have to go through KCM again, but I didn't get randomed. Um, although they did swipe my palms just in case I had some explosives or something on me. I don't know. But uh, now we're going to make our way to the gate. Whew, a lot of work to go back to the same plane. <laughs> but uh, one more leg and uh, we'll be in Baltimore. I'll see you soon. And another bus. It's been a lot to get just back to the plane. This has been a lot of work just to get from this plane through customs, <laughs> back through the airport, through security, back up here to the gate to get back to the same plane. Uh, take the bus out here again. The just been a lot it's been a lot uh and then i get here i told our cleaners that there's gum on a seat well three seats 19 a b and c gum all over the place we came back on the plane as much as we've been gone they never touched it never touched it so i had to spend the last 10 minutes scraping somebody's gum off of a seat and seat belts with my fingernails which is really disturbing honestly um so um yeah it's just i'm just tired we've had two 
fairly long legs and then we have this last one uh, we have 150 some odd people on board uh, we'll be boarding in just a moment they'll be arriving by bus and things aren't as bad as I'm making them sound I'm just tired I'm just tired so we'll be in Baltimore soon and then I'll just jump in bed we have like a 12-hour layover um, and that's it I will see you later Hey guys, how are ya? Um, it is 11.24 in the evening, and I've been in the room for maybe a half hour or so, maybe 40 minutes. Um, I feel like a character in a David Lynch film. I, completely surreal. I mean, not even... I don't even know how to describe how I feel right now. Shortly before um, landing, I visited the little boys' room in, on the plane, and I kind of I see how I sat down, did my thing, and I leaned forward, and I could almost feel gravity pulling my eyeballs out of my head. <laughs> I mean, that's that's where I was. It was a very long, very. Uh, it ended up being surreal the day. Uh, this last leg of our trip was two hours and thirty-two minutes. Uh, our pastors, for the most part, were very, very easygoing, very simple. We had a couple that were more work than necessary, uh, honestly. Uh, a passenger's, you know, most often a passenger's job is to sit in their seat <laughs> and just be a passenger. And a couple of them took some extra credit work upon themselves to make the day a little bit more interesting. And it was completely unnecessary, but um, I'm not going to tell you what happened because it would be inappropriate to share really my feelings on those those points. I tell you, I'm not even here. Uh, but the flight was very long. Um, the saving grace, as always, is a good crew. Uh, my chaser in particular was really, really very full of personality and charm and energy. Uh, at the end of the day, though, we were both trying to like keep ourselves together. You know, it was a very long day. Uh, have I said that 15 times already? Um, yeah, there's really nothing I can share with you about like what exactly was the tipping point. I did make like a dozen cups of noodle, cup noodles, cups of noodle. I made a dozen, at least a dozen of those. Uh, we sell them on the plane in the course of maybe 20 minutes. And that in itself was just really irksome. I don't know. It was just, it was just, mm. for other flight attendants, Diet Coke is their, is the challenge because it takes forever. Do you pour a little bit, it fizzes up and you have to kind of wait for it to go down. Then you pour a little bit more and it fizzes up and it, and it just takes forever to pour a cup of Diet Coke. For me, it's cup noodles. It's just kind of frustrating. I have to step away from our cart leaving it in the hands of another capable flight attendant, of course. But it's the cup noodles that just, oh, they're so tedious. Especially when you have to make like a dozen of them. Oh, it's a lot. But um, I'm going to let that day go. I'm going to let the whole day go. It's over. My layover today is like 15 and a half hours. So enough time to sit down, eat. I'm watching um, the rest of Zombieland just to kind of you know, put the cherry on the cake. Um, my shuttle tomorrow is, I'm going to aim for the one thirty shuttle so I can get a, get a cup of coffee uh, and, you know, relax, get into the day. Um, my coworkers are taking the two o'clock shuttle. I might end up on that shuttle as well. Who knows? But um, tomorrow we're flying from here to Fort Lauderdale and back. So that should be a fairly easy, simple day. Knock on wood. Um, the, remember the chicken I bought at Costco the other day that was so expensive? It's delicious. Oh my goodness. So worth it. It doesn't look good here. Yeah, it does not look good <laughs> in my little uh, Stojo uh, bowl. But absolutely delicious and totally worth it but not totally worth it but um maybe i'm inspired to make it my own version of it but blah 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 i'm gonna let you go i'm gonna finish eating watch some zombie land i'm probably gonna get to bed about 1 1 30 just to give myself some time to digest and um i'll have time to sleep in tomorrow i keep talking i keep talking i'll talk to you later bye Hello guys, good afternoon. So I did recover from yesterday. Um, I was wrecked, wrecked after yesterday. Oh my God. But I had a late night dinner of uh, chicken with some cheddar and broccoli uh, stuffing. It was delicious. Did you see that fruit fly? That was like a hawk. Um, 
<laughs> then then um, I got to bed about 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, but it was like being home. I woke up at like 10.30, 11 o'clock in the morning. Fantastic. My breakfast slash lunch was um, a can of Progresso lentil soup. I eat that often on layovers uh, with some pasta, elbow pasta thrown in there. Um, it was good, satisfying. I'm, f I'm full. Uh, I'm taking the 130 shuttle in hopes of getting like an iced coffee or something from somewhere. Um, the other crew's taking the two o'clock shuttle, but a half hour just doesn't feel like enough to me. Uh, and I don't want to rush to my gate. So I'm taking the 130 shuttle, which is in five minutes. So I will see you either at the airport or in Fort Lauderdale, which is where we're flying today. Hey there, hi, welcome to Fort Lauderdale. So uh, that flight was two hours and two minutes. Uh, really, really nice, very turbulent. We had a lot of turbulence. Uh, so we didn't have a chance to do a full service, but at one point uh, the two flight attendants in the back did most of a hand service, most of, most of the plane. We were up in front uh, and we had to let the pilots out so they can use the lavatory. So unfortunately that uh, made our um, flight attendants in the back do most of a hand service. Uh, but um, yeah, easy flight, no drama, no trauma, except for the turbulence. We did have amazing passengers on board, in particular this family up in front. There, I think there were 10 people in the family traveling together. Bunch of kids, bunch of adults, unbelievably nice, nice family. They were traveling from Baltimore to Marathon Key. I've never heard of Marathon Key, but I want to go. Uh, they're going snorkeling to capture lobsters. Then they're going to eat the lobsters, which I think is absolutely terrifying. Oh, oh, oh lobster. Um, they're just big bugs. But um, it sounds nice to go snorkeling, right? So I'm going to check that out. Hi. Um, and I'm Steven. Thank you, honey. Um, and then, um, let's see what else. Oh, and Grayson. Grayson, a soft spot in my heart for Grayson. He was sitting in 1A. I think he's 11. Such a good kid. All the kids were great, but he was came on board crying. He was he had tears in his eyes because he was a, he's very stressed. Very stressed about flying. Very anxious. And I think he did such a good job today, mostly because I bored the tears out of their whole family talking, blah, 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 stories to distract him and also you know, whatever. But we had a wonderful time, really nice family. Mom was a nurse, uh, a chemo nurse. She does, she helps patients with chemo. Amazing, amazing woman, great family, really nice flight. Two hours, two minutes, so even better. Um, we're going to be flying back to Baltimore, and I feel like a nap. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Hey guys, how are ya? It is 10.33 in the evening. We landed about 9.25. Uh, and as long as it seemed to take to get here to the hotel, it was pretty quick, actually. Um, we landed 9.25. We had uh, we deplaned a full flight. Uh, we had five wheelchairs on board, so we had to wait for the wheelchair folks to come in and escort them and help them off the aircraft. Um, I had to wait behind for a minute or two trying to find um, out whether or not a passenger's car seat was going to be up at the gate as it should have been, but it seemed to have been sent off to the luggage carousel, which is not what should have happened, but it did. So hung out there waiting for that to to find out whether or not that happened or not. And then uh, we had to seemingly wait forever for the shuttle. But all in all, we got to the hotel really quickly. Um, I pulled off my uniform as fast as humanly possible. I'm surprised there's buttons left on my shirt. I mean, I just ripped it off like magic Mike. Um, threw my computer down. My dinner has just finished heating in the microwave. Our flight today uh, coming back to Baltimore was two hours and 26 minutes, a little bit longer because the captain tried to avoid some of the weather we went through the first time. Not terribly successful in that we still have pretty, pretty um, consistent turbulence. Not terrific, but consistent. Um, and uh, he had us sitting for most of the flight. We did get up and do a service. 
Um, we have a tablet, an I iPad that we use for work. Uh, it is our flight attendant manual. It's also our um, device for ringing up snacks and per other kinds of purchases. This is the credit card reader. Uh, and apparently, well, my dinner's ready. Uh, the credit card reader is famous for not working. And mine was the only one that worked. So serving 182 people on the plane with one credit card reader was mildly irritating, but it was the worst part of my day. Isn't that nice? Um, yeah, so I'm going to grab my dinner. I'm going to eat because I'm starving. I'm always telling you how hungry and tired I am. <laughs> Sorry. You're getting me at work often, and that's when I'm hungry and tired. So let's get my dinner. Room tour. There we go. That's my room tour. Um, let's see what we have. Oh, I have the um, chicken breast. Let's see this. And here is my Stojo bowl. It's a silicone bowl with a clasping lid that is wonderful. And uh, I love this bowl. And that's a better looking image of that chicken breast. It's huge. That's my hand for proportion. It's a pretty good sized portion of food. Um, I need to try and find another one of these Stojo bowls because, I mean, I abuse this one and I love it so much. Um, but it's expensive. I got it on sale for 10 bucks at Target one day, but I gotta find another one of these things. If you are a flight attendant, this is the best collapsible bowl you can find. Um, I'm gonna eat that and I will see you guys probably tomorrow. Bye. So hello guys, I am just leaving my room. Something I have taken to doing lately is putting a post-it note on the front of my door saying checking out at one o'clock because Housekeeping is just knocking on doors, yelling housekeeping, uh, not uh, apparently checking anything to say whether or not someone's in the room or not. So uh, as a flight attendant, it's just irritating. I know they're doing their jobs, but there's got to be a more efficient way of just than just knocking on doors. Flight attendants are often sleeping at this hour because they just arrived a few hours ago or like four in the morning or something. So it's incredibly frustrating and sometimes potentially dangerous because flight attendants, you know, we might have our rest being interrupted when we have minimum rest, 10 hours, for example. Uh, and then that person can't, that flight attendant can't get to sleep and then they can't really work effectively or safely. Blah, 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 rant over. But I have been taken to writing post-it notes Basically saying, don't touch this door, please. Ta-da. All right. One flight <laughs> rant over. Uh, one flight back to Las Vegas today. Very happy. This has been a very long four-day. Um, I usually have at least one long layover during my trips. So just having three short layovers feels taxing. It just feels like a lot. Uh, but in fact, I think all in all, I was... I'm away from base like 75 hours, 76 hours, so it's really not that bad. All right, gotta go downstairs. See you later. Hey guys, in Baltimore, get into the plane. I've done my safety checks. Um, my chaser back to Las Vegas is amazing. We have such a good time. He was Las Vegas based. Now he's in Fort Lauderdale, uh, but um, he transferred. But uh, we got to the plane. I was looking at the paperwork. Cause, did I mention I'm flying lead? I'm not sure if I did. Uh, but I looked at the paperwork. I was like, oh, 141 out of 145. So almost a full boat. But that means we're on a 319, not a 320. And that means I don't need a chaser on this flight. It would be nice because I really like him. He's fantastic. Uh, but um, yeah, so we're on a 319. So he's up at the, at the, jet, at the uh, gate calling crew scheduling uh, to find out whether he should be deadheading, should he get on the plane, whatever. But uh, I'm gonna be sad only because I really do enjoy him and a four hour and 43 minute flight would have been a lot more fun with him, but I do have a book uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see. No Wi-Fi, <laughs> so our passengers will pretend it's 1985 for four hours and 43 minutes. All right, so I will see you in Las Vegas. Hey guys, how are ya? Welcome home. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Whew, what a flight. What a flight. It was supposed to be four hours and 26 minutes. 
it was closer to five hours uh, because there's significant weather happening around the Vegas area. So they had us in a holding pattern for a while. Not bad normally, but we had, I don't know, 10 passengers, of course, all the way in the back of the plane who were uh, going to have very tight connections. So uh, I used all of my charm and humor to ask people to stay seated while they got off the plane. It worked. Really nice passengers. We uh, had quite a bit of turbulence and uh, some of our passengers had every right to be irritable or tired and they were fantastic. All of them. Not one issue or problem or complaint. So, very happy with that flight. Um, yeah, we were supposed to be on a 320, but we were reduced to a 319. So my chaser ended up deadheading here, and now he has to do a Salt Lake City turn, which is not a big problem, but after a five hour deadhead, that's gonna feel like a long uh, turn. So the weather, as you can see here in Las Vegas, is a little weird. See how the bottoms of the clouds are kind of ragged. There's like little tears and dips and places where it's falling. That's uh, rain falling from the clouds, but not quite making it to the ground because it's so hot and so dry. And uh, it's very gusty, very gusty here. We flew the whole way at 30,000 feet. Usually we're at 38,000 feet, uh, but uh, it was smoother down where we were. Still very turbulent, but uh, oh my gosh, I'm so glad to be home. I've got one day off, then I do a turn. I think it's a four hour credit, nothing huge. Then I've got one day off, then I start another four day trip. Uh, bids came out today. I'll let you know what I got. Maybe, maybe when I film for my uh, turn, I'll tell you about my schedule for September. I got my first choice, not the perfect line, but what was there and what I knew I could get and hold, I got my first choice, so that was good. Um, all right, I'm hungry. <laughs> I had like, I don't know, a few mouthfuls of pesto pasta uh, on the plane. That was my lunch and breakfast. So I have hardly eaten anything today, so I'm gonna Grab a bite on the way home. I want to cook at home and save money, but I'm too too tired. It's not it's not the right time to be frugal. So I will uh, I'll see you later. All right. Thanks for joining me. Fly safe.